There is an old quandary in biology, the origins of sex. This is because it's fairly inefficient to reproduce with two different sexes. Compared to bacteria that can asexually multiply into hundreds of millions of cells in a day, humans who reproduce sexually seem to have it pretty rough. Looking at how it takes 30 years to raise a single generation, how many resources go into finding a mate, and the time and effort of raising a child, one begins to question why sex exists in the first place. In terms of resources and time consumed, as well as reproduction speed alone, sexual reproduction is no contest for asexual reproduction. Despite these circumstances, however, sexually reproductive life forms thrive on Earth. How in the world is this possible? The topic of today's video is the origins of sex. Our first lead was discovered in the early 1930s by evolutionary biologist Ronald Fisher and experimental geneticist Herman Joseph Mueller. They argued that sexual reproduction can respond to changes in the environment faster than asexual reproduction because it can quickly and easily create mutations through the combination of different sexes. Complicated? Here. To make it easier to understand, let me give you an example. Let's assume that there is an asexually producing group A and a sexually producing group B. This is, of course, highly unlikely, but please bear with me. Normally, the reproductive rate of group A will be superior to that of group B. But what if, in this situation, a deadly new virus spread to both groups? Because group A reproduces asexually, genetic diversity is almost non-existent. No one will be able to overcome the virus. That is, this group will go extinct. On the other hand, due to their high genetic diversity, some in group B may have genes making them immune to the virus, meaning they will survive. The legendary evolutionary biologist William Hamilton also published a paper in 1982 explaining the origins of sex with the Red Queen hypothesis. He argued that potential hosts evolved sex to defend themselves from parasitic attacks. Surprisingly, the mystery surrounding the origins of sex slowly began unraveling around an entirely unexpected subject parasites and pathogens too. The parasites we'll be referring to here include viruses and bacteria as well. Sexual reproduction is more cumbersome and slower than asexual reproduction, but it offers greater genetic diversity. If you look around, you can see its effects. It's difficult to find two individuals who share the same personality, face, body type, or general health. When males and females meet and mate, their genetic information is mixed and passed on to their offspring with completely new defense mechanisms. To use a metaphor, if Thanos suddenly invaded Earth, we might say that 10 heroes with a diverse set of skills stand a better chance of winning than 100 Iron Men. Genetic diversity is just that important. Interestingly, there's an experiment that proves the Red Queen hypothesis about the origins of sex. In 2009, evolutionary biologist professor Joka Jokela experimented with mud snails that can reproduce both sexually and asexually. He divided the snails into sexual and asexual groups, and then introduced parasites to both groups respectively. What do you think was the result? Over time, the number of the asexual snails declined sharply. This was because the parasites had developed new offensive weaponry that could neutralize asexual snails' defenses. On the other hand, the number of sexually reproducing snails steadily increased. Why did this happen? This is because the offspring born through sexual reproduction have different genetic traits compared to their parents. In other words, though their parents may have been helpless against the parasite's new weapons, the offspring could defend themselves against the parasites because they had the combined genes of their parents. This shows that life evolves by interacting with other living things. And at the heart of evolution are parasites. When Hamilton's Red Queen hypothesis first appeared in 1982, many people shook their heads thinking, did we evolve to have hot sex because of parasites? Now, however, it has gained ground as a plausible explanation of why sex exists. When animals mate, it's almost like you can almost hear them cry out, purge the parasites! This is why breeding is so important, everyone. So, for the next few episodes, I'll be making a few videos around the theme of love. I hope you enjoy the next video. This is Science Dream, science with a sprinkle of fun. If you found this video educational and entertaining, please like and subscribe. It means a lot.